Let's broaden out the AI discussion, though. Is the AI bubble set to burst or is the hype spreading even overseas? In today's morning brief, Yahoo Finance's Brian Sazi writes from Cannes, where he tackles the AI hype and its travel there. Snapchat, Meta, Pinterest, among a handful of companies who are showcasing their latest AI projects. And most of the panels there uh, at the Lions. Uh, conference will cover the tech and how it will shape the advertising industry. But how many of the discussions and new products will actually bear real fruit? How many are just riding the hype train? Musician and investor Will I Am uh, sat down with Brad Smith and Brian Sazi to discuss AI's impact in creative industries and beyond. Well, there's a lot of folks in the world that don't know generative AI yet. So we can't we can't just sit as, and feel as if it's arrived for us. As us meaning everyone, uh, there's still a lot of folks that um, don't understand how it's going to transform everything. So I say for a while, this is this is it for a minute, for the next ten years. Obviously, it was quite windy over there on the French Riviera. Effectively, what he was saying is that there's still a broad swath of the global population that. It's never even heard of ChatGPT that's not using it yet. And so there's a lot of runway for growth here. So let's continue this AI discussion with our guest, Steve Sosnick, Interactive Brokers Chief Strategist. So, Steve, we've been sort of sprinkling in some AI discussion because it's permeating everything right now into what we're doing. But I think Palantir is sort of a good emblematic example, right? Has had a huge run in part because of AI. So sort of as an investor, where are we are we right now and what should people be doing with this stuff? Well, this is this is the the critical question, and it's really hard to tell because you know from a, what Raymond James said here was on a fundamental basis the stock you know the stock has has more than doubled. It was it was mired in that six to eight range for for months, year you know better part of years, and now you know and then all of a sudden boom it's sixteen. Um, that's a that's a big that's a big deal. So do you you know at some point do you take profits? Um, and, and, you know, do you do you ride this out to the very end? And it's really, you know, becomes the balance of fear versus greed. Um, it, it can be very, you know, the, these things. Uh, let, let me stipulate. Maybe they are really as life changing as they, they can as they are advertised. And, I, and I'll say it is. But we're, we're almost at the phase now where I remember during the Internet bubble, a, st- a company would get a bump if they announced that they were working on a website. Like, you know, Gap Stores was going to be starting a website, mm-hmm. Ooh. you know, and, and this is kind of the thing. This is where we are now is that everybody has to say what they're doing about AI because they can't not say that. And, the, you know, and, and so are you dealing with, you know, what I would call the picks and shovels of, of the AI gold rush, you know, in, to a better to some extent, NVIDIA, to some extent, Palantir, I guess. Um, or are you just sort of dealing with every other company sort of has to make a, a mention of it regardless mm. of of whether they're really deeply committed to it or not. Yeah, and and I guess as it all it all depends on your time horizon, as most things do when it comes to investing. And, you know, if you think that this is going to be a transformative technology, do you just kind of hang on to these things? Right. Do you even add to these things if you see a drop in some of these stocks? Well, I think some of them, you know, I I think you have to go. I think you have to remember the valuation discipline of this. I think so much of this recent rally, whether it's the AI stocks or whether it was something like Darden, which we talked about before, or FedEx, a lot of it has been margin expansion. I'm sorry, multiple expansion. Mm. And so if, if you're if it's a matter of buying things because of strictly of multiple expansion and not because the future E is really going to grow, um, if you're just willing to attach more of a value to to the to the expected earnings stream without really seeing a catalyst for some sort of, tr- you know, dramatic growth. Well, then you have to wonder in, in an environment where fiscal head, well, you have fiscal headwinds and monetary tightening. Is that the appropriate thing to be doing or is that something that, you know, is likely to get pulled back? So if not AI, then what in, in this market? Like where should people be looking to add to positions? I think the, the one of the recent times you were on with us, you talked about the challenge of finding value in this market, right? So how should 
what should people be buying right now? I think it's even more challenging because mm. you've had this multiple expansion. I think keep an eye on dividends. I, I, you know, ultimately, you know. But that's look, so boring, It Steve. is boring. It is boring. <laughs> AI is exciting. It's fun. Yeah. Will I am is not going to come on come on air. <laughs> he's not going to talk about dividends. He's not going to talk about utility stocks <laughs> or you know or dividends. No, that's that's not interesting. But ultimately, sometimes not interesting may be the way to go. Because you know you do you don't necessarily want to put all your chips on the table in this one hot sector or this one hot market. Perhaps you do want something that's got a little bit of ballast, and that's where the dividends come in. That's where some defensive stocks come in, and that's where valuation discipline comes in. Because again, are you overpaying for growth? If there's some if there's some growth catalyst and you're not overpaying some, so I was doing, you know someone was asking me recently about Alphabet and Meta and and, and some of these stocks and. Their, their PEG ratios, the PE divided by the anticipated growth, is a little over one. So they've had these huge runs, but they're not phenomenally expensive mm. by conventional valuation. And that's measures. how people, you think PEG is, is what people should be looking at I right now? I think PEG is a very, it, you can't overlook PEG. If you're, pay, if you're really wildly paying a big multiple you know, for, for growth, uh, you know, that, that may or may not come, you, you better reassess it. Or if you're paying a big ratio, um, Big ratio for for growth that in a company that's not really growing that's that's another that's another big red flag. Well, and some of these companies are definitely not profitable yet either, right? Some of the smaller players, not obviously yes. an Nvidia or Palantir, for example. Um, you know, you're looking at different metrics for some of the little guys. And you should be thinking about them differently. There's nothing wrong with with investing in those companies mm. by any means, but you have to be selective and you have to recognize that in some cases it, it could it could work wildly well for you. In others. You know, you're going to look at you, you can look back at them in a few years. And go, Why did I invest in this? It's 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 done nothing. And so yeah. you, you don't know. And that's OK. You know, stock if you're investing in stocks, by definition, you should be optimistic. You know, bond people invest in bonds are generally pessimistic or, or at least at best neutral on, on things. But if you're investing in equities, you, you you should have an optimistic viewpoint because you're 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 investing in the future of, of growth, of earnings, of, of expansion. Um, but that doesn't mean it works out for everyone all the time. Right. Unbridled, you know, optimism is good. Unbridled optimism it can be risky. And so it's yes. okay, it's okay to take risks as long as you understand that, that, it, that you're risking stuff that is sort of the risky part of your portfolio, right. Right. not your, you know, not the stuff you need to pay your rent in, in, in a couple months. Yeah.